Today we're going to continue looking at verse number 8 of James chapter 4. And we've been talking now for several days about submitting to God, the steps to draw near to God. And I encourage you to go back, watch the previous videos that we've done, we'll listen to previous podcast episodes, uh, get yourself caught up to where we are here. Uh, we're going to look at the second half of this verse today. Uh, verse number 8 of James chapter 4 says, Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Clean, cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Now, I think it's interesting here at the end of verse number 8 that James says, ye double-minded. Because he talked a little about that in chapter number 1, where we learn that if you're double-minded, you shouldn't expect to know or to get anything from God. Um, God doesn't like double-mindedness, and, and he puts it in there. And that's one of the things that we need to make sure that we get rid of when we submit to God, when we draw near to God. Now let's back it up here. He says, cleanse your hands, ye sinners. You see, we get the image here. Uh, of washing our hands and we all know the importance after this whole COVID epidemic and everything we know the importance of our hygiene and washing our hands and things like that but here in the scriptures it has a different I don't want to say context but it has a different connotation here because we have to look at things as as sinful we have to look at things as sin and sin is what separates us and God. Sin is a stench in the nostrils of God. Sin is something that we need to make sure that we, we get out of our life. When we confess our sins and accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we need to go and, and, and his shed blood is what cleanses us from our unrighteousness. It's what cleanses us. And James is telling us here, that if we want to draw near to God, we have to cleanse our hands. We have to get rid of the sin that is in there. Remember when Jesus was going through the mockeries of a trial that he was doing and he stood before Pilate and Pilate brought him out and said, he asked the crowd if they wanted him to release Jesus or Barabbas and, and the crowd hollered Barabbas and and told him to crucify Jesus. What did he do? He washed his hands of the situation. You've heard that phrase. Well, I'm going to wash my hands of this, this problem. I'm going to wash my hands of this problem, whatever. And that's the image that we get here. We need to get rid of the sin, the stench, the filth that is in our life, the sin that is there. We need to cleanse that. In Isaiah chapter number 1, Verses 16 and 17 says this, Wash ye. Actually, let's back it up here to verse, verse 15. And when ye spread forth your hands, I will hide mine eyes from you. Yea, when ye make many prayers, I will not hear. Your hands are full of blood. Wash ye, make ye clean, put away the evil doings from before my eyes. Cease to do evil. Learn to do well. Seek judgment. Relieve the oppressed. Judge the fatherless. Plead for the widow. Friends, Isaiah is making it clear here that we have we have blood on our hands. It's the blood of our, our sin. It's the blood of, of us not sharing the gospel with others, people that we may have known that maybe died and never heard the gospel, at least not from us. We have blood in our hands, and, G and James, Isaiah here is saying that we need to wash and make ourselves clean, and then look what he says. Put away the evil of your doings from before mine eyes. Get ourselves clean. Put away the evilness in there. Then he says, cease or stop doing or cease to do evil. Cease to do evil. Cease is an action word. That means we need to we need to put into action 
a sin-free lifestyle. Let me put it that way to you. We need to cease to do evil. None of us has to be taught how to sin. None of us has to be taught how to tell a lie. None of us has to be taught how to do wrong. We need to be taught how to do the good things, how to do the good things of God. So we need to cleanse our hands. We need to, to get the filth, the blood, the, the stench of sin off of us. And then he says, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Cleanse our hands, then purify our hearts. What do we mean by purifying our hearts? You know, many of you, most, a lot of people, I would venture to say probably a good number of people watching this today, most likely drink bottled water. I'm one of them. I like bottled spring water. Some people like bottled purified water. That's water that has been made clean. Our heart, like our hands, needs to be made clean. In First Peter chapter 1 and verse 22, Scripture says, Seeing ye have been purified. See, let me start over. Seeing ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren. See that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently. What is Peter teaching us here? Our souls have been purified. How? By obeying the truth through the Spirit. You see, just like the Spirit told the writers of the Bible what to write, the Spirit tells us today what the Bible is teaching us. The Spirit teaches us the things of God. And that's how, how, do, how do we get our hearts purified? By obeying the truth of God. By obeying the truth of his word. By obeying what God's word says. That's how we develop a trust in God. That's how our hearts get purified. So for today, let's get our hands cleansed. Let's wash our hands of the filth and the, of the sin in our life. And let's purify our hearts. Start obeying the truth of God's word. Think about that as you go through this day. And remember, get into God's word and allow God's word to get into you. And then share that word with someone today. Have a blessed day.